this poor thing. Whoop, oh, there you go. So this has just got to stop this rust. Yeah, arrest, arrest that rust. Stop it now. got my orange and I'm gonna go home and I'm going to start to draw out the patterns for that so that we can start to cut and work on the seat cover. Okay, we're gonna start with the seat pan now. As you can see, it's been sandblasted, but it's very, very damaged. I think that's basically the support structure that'll go under or the shape for that. Let me do the other side, but I think I've got this line now. Um, after all the measuring that I've done on the, on the bike, this pan is distorted. It's really bad. Um, I think I'm gonna make one from scratch. I've had a look online to try and find a shortcut route to buy a pan, um, but there are none. There are some seats, but they're, some of those pans are Mark III, which means they're more molded, they're structurally better than these, but they're not right for this bike. So I'm gonna hit bite the bullet and I'm gonna make a seat pan from scratch. There are some challenges. I need to do some bending. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna get these nice and sharp. But other than that, this is going to be a fairly straightforward rebuild. So, um, let's see. Seat can't sit down on the top tube as it should. Um, just make something quick a bender it's very very basic but I don't need it to do much more than one one and a half mil Right, let's 
Let's see if this fits. I have just tacked this on because I'm gonna make sure this is right first. So that's good. Really nice. Finish tacking that. Just fit it on the uh, and that looks pretty good. The Buddy Rich Big Band, genius drummer, genius band, great, great music, fantastic arrangements, makes me happy. Huh. Now, if you're doing an authentic restoration, this is why it's so important to look properly at the original or what's left of the original you see these screws here this one snapped off um, I'm not quite sure what they were because there's no hole that goes into the frame they register on the top here I don't see any major dents or anything and I'm assuming what it is is a kind of a height adjuster for the front of the seat to raise the seat up or down I'm not sure now we just got to puncture um, the holes for the rivets for these um, upholstery work to go on. It's quite a lot more work than I thought, but wow, very satisfying, I have to say. All right, now we line up the rivet holes. Okay. How to cut sponge. Well, we're gonna give it a go. Someone says a sharp red knife would do, but then you get different types of foam, so let's see. This is an original one. Nice and rough, fast production run. I'm quite happy with that and we just have to fine tune it on the base plate and see how that fits. Here we are. Sits so okay.
the tension's about as good as I'm going to get on this domestic um, sewing machine. Let's see quickly how that will kind of look, how accurate that is. And I'm looking specifically for how smooth that curve is. Because I see on many reproductions, well, they're pretty rough. And to me, they don't look right. Right, let me show you where we are now. So having um, foamed this saddle up based on very little information, um, I've got all the dia, the geometrics of it as close as I can to what I thought was correct. Now, when you line up all these, you'll see there's a, a change in, in heights here. Now, if you look at this picture of the 1968 uh, Commander, you'll see the way that the rear piece comes down from a curl. So you can feel there's a ridge there, which I got off the rusted piece, but actually that ridge continues down uh, to about there and then runs a straight line across. Um, so I have to add material to the, to the substructure, so it has to be about there somewhere in line with the tank. And this is quite a lot trickier than I thought and also this is too sharp an angle so this has got to be raised so it is more in line with the shape. You can see inside of these rubbers that I fitted uh, here's a temporary one on here because I've still got to make this one. The ones down here really see it but up there will raise the saddle up a little higher which in turn will affect the height of that and the height of the seat coming towards the the tank that line has to be straight so let's get this line sorted So there we are at last. What seems to be a very simple requirement to get that line, which is the trademark of this particular bike level. It takes some effort, it really does. So, um, and also to get that curve just right, um, I think I've pretty much nailed it. And this as well, get, getting this down to make some modifications to the uh, to the pan unfortunately both there and here we now know what they did here and now know why this bracket point sits traditionally on the outside of the silver part and not the inside is because the uh, fiberglass extension of the of the fastback can't go in between the bracket and the pan so we phoned that in so We'll see how the fabric goes and how smooth it is, otherwise I'll just have to infill that with foam until it's absolutely smooth. And then we've got ourselves a fast back, as it was. So yeah, I'm very pleased with that. What I'm doing now is setting the tension so that I can get this exact angle because I want the seam to run exactly there and exactly on the end here. So I need to kind of pre-tension it before I commit to cutting. So we cut a little triangle there and a little triangle there. It's because if you're working upside down, you can't, and you don't want to mark the material, you have to have a mark point where the center line arrow is. So that's really what it is. So you'll see this is quite an important uh, segment now. Um, this is going to create the shape of the actual seat seam here. So what I've done is I've traced on that edge. Now you'll notice this is soft foam, so I'm kind of getting a general picture 
when I take that off, I'm going to tidy that line up because that line is everything. That line is what we're going to be sewing on. So instead of doing this side and then doing that side, I'm now taking off all this and I'm going to double fold it on this line and I am going to copy it to the other side. This is not easy. Whoever came up with a design for a side lips around the tank didn't anticipate the amount of work that goes into this. Even though they went mass production, I must have been hellish to try and work this out initially. Hence why they were most probably delighted when the Roadster came out without the fastback style. It would have been uh, much appreciated, I'm sure, for the seamstress. So, meet major challenge number one is to get this angle. We're going to sew that on to the center seam that runs down here, and then it's got to go around this bend at the same time. I've taped the entire thing to try and see where the the center line goes. Right, we commit to those are the inners, and that's the join line. So I've done a few test runs, and um, I'm quite happy to start now. So that's folded double stitch because especially with this type of stitch and make sure that whatever you're sewing has got the um, the non-sticky side on the top and you're sewing really upside down and if that's the case you'll see how easily this whistles through it just doesn't it just doesn't uh, hassle at all. So a double stitch on that line, try and sew straight over the top of it, just gives it that extra strength. And then cut whatever's left off as much as possible so that you, when you're um, putting it onto the seat, it doesn't bulge, it doesn't bulk up. Remember that once you've sewn it, just obviously be careful you don't cut through the thread because once you cut through the thread, You've got a hole and it's a bit of an ugly old thing and you have to start again. So just remember that. You can cut the excess off. It makes it a lot more comfortable when you have to slide it over those, those ears. Okay, so that's the first, first uh, tongue done, double stitched. There it is. Okay, good start. Here's one of these. Let's get all those seams open so that you get a nice curve because I sewed it that way. So I'm sewing this in stages because uh, I've got to get this angle up real high on both sides and to try and sew it in one go for my amateur hand is not possible so I'm sewing Locking, sewing, locking, sewing until I've got it right. So now we're going to put what we call a top stitch in there, and that just is a strengthening stitch and also gives the the build-up of the material a nice solid edge, a nice solid line. It's kind of what I had to do here um, by doing a double layer on this inside so that I didn't have a double stitch on here. Get these wrinkles out. 
so that this inner is smooth. Not that you'll see it, but I know it's there. tweaks and things we need to make. Make sure it all fits perfectly. Found this shopping bag strap from little. It's perfect. I'm gonna try some baby powder. See if that works better. Because it is sticking. Oh yes. This was just brilliant. Ba baby powder just stops the gripping. If you've got vinyl and you have to sew on this side, underneath the shoe, baby powder. This never dawned on me what these screws were. I thought they were adjusters for the saddle, raising them up and down. I couldn't figure out what they were. Anyway, because they were on the original, I copied them, fitted these on. Now, when I got to the strap, I was thinking, now where about on the saddle does it fit? And I turned the thing over and I go, duh. They go on these. 